So I'm here today for our homegrown hangout with Sarah Tabo. It's so cool to have you here, Sarah. We've been talking hey. a lot recently because you've been working with us through Rocket Fuel and you're going to be telling us a little bit about your Christmas event as well. But anyway, tell us how you got started as a writer, as an artist, as a worship leader. Tell us the whole story. Gosh, have you got time? <laughs> Go for it. Let's, no, let's um, it. <laughs> I've actually been singing in choir since I was about 10. So I was born in the UK and went back to Nigeria with my parents when I was much younger. And so I started, I was introduced literally to, to church music since I was about 10, singing in choirs through my teenage years and literally just been the church girl who always does the solo and leads worship. Um, but I'd always known that there was something more to my gifting and um, it was something that needed to be shared with a wider audience outside the four walls of the church however I wasn't really confident in my gift um, and that's probably down to the fact that sometimes in church we get lots of applause even for, for mediocrity so oh, yeah. I genuinely wasn't quite sure if all the applause was because I was good or they were just trying to make me feel happy or good about you know my gift but over the, over the course of time I actually um, found people who were reputable and who validated my gift and they were like you should do something and so 2014 I started the journey I actually had a period of fasting which out of the blues I woke up one morning and God said fast for 40 days it wasn't even about music I just had that instruction and when I did that I got a very clear sort of picture of what my first album should be called what the strategy for the promotion should be and this is somebody who's never done any of this before um and um and I got obviously some other um, direction and instruction and in other parts of my life I got healed from chronic hay fever in that season but long story short it was literally a journey of you know I've been singing since I was a kid I had my period of you know being on shore you know doubtful lacking confidence to coming um, to getting a very clear direction from God and validation from people who were credible I should say and mentoring as well played a very vital part and then the career, quote unquote, was launched in 2015 with my first single, Still My Joy, which came out in October 2015. And I've had two albums since and working on a third. Great. And you, you're a hard worker. You're very talented, but very hard working as well. So there's two things I, that really struck me there. One is I could kind of picture you, you know, going up to the kid who's just sung for the first time at church saying, that wasn't good enough. You need to do better next time. Is it? <laughs> oh, is my that God. Kind of, is that the kind of coaching and stuff you <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking there. No, I think I think there's something that you know we do need to give space for people to develop and you know use their gifts and create safe spaces for people to share, but also yeah. help people with realistic, you know, kind of a progression outline or or just some kind of you know training and input investment to help people actually use their gifts really well. So we're not yeah. like settling with you know, that's okay for church, you know, the, the church used to be the center for culture and arts and yeah, you're right. the way and pioneering. And uh, it's a shame when it becomes something second rate or people think Christian music, oh, that's going to be a bit, mm. a bit kind of run of the mill or a bit cheesy or cliche. So, so that's cool. The other thing, fasting, that's, that's really, really good. I know from my journey in the past few years, there's been a, a few times when I've, I've fasted and you know, sometimes you're just thinking about something for ages. You overthink, you overthink, you overthink. And you're like, what, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? And sometimes fasting just gives you that clarity. Very clear. Absolutely. It's really, a really powerful thing. So, so you were nominated a few years ago now for a MOBO. So that's, yes. that's like a big deal. That's like a huge, huge award ceremony in the UK. Tell us about that. How did that come about? It was literally the very year I came up with my first album. So 2016, I was brand new on the scene and my album came out in May. I got nominated by August of the year. Um, I was the only female nominee and I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised, but very, very surprised that it was, you know, happening the recognition was coming that quick. And I did have a bit of imposter syndrome. I'm one of those people who sometimes feel like, yeah, there are other people who are more deserving than me. And I just looked around and I thought maybe this is a bit too soon, but I was genuinely grateful and, and pleasantly surprised and happy about it. But it was a bit like mixed feelings at the time. But I think it's been a, good, a great blessing to have had that recognition from a platform like uh, the Mobos. And it's really helped um, over the years open many doors. So I can't complain at all. Definitely. No, that's, that's, that's fantastic. So in terms of like the mix of writing, recording, you know, doing your performing and ministry, what, what do you enjoy most and, and what have you 
what have you kind of missed particularly this year with with lockdown? live performances without a doubt definitely the live performances um just having that interaction with the audience and seeing their response as well to what one is singing i think that that there's a whole different feel to it i mean i've done a number of virtual events over lockdown where you're recording or you're doing something live but and obviously they're powerful as well but there is an element to the performances there's a power to the performances that comes from seeing the people that you're ministering to you're singing to seeing how the music is inf- is affecting them impacting them and their response as well and that's one big thing i enjoy and that i terribly miss i can't wait to get back to to be honest yeah. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long time, has it? Hasn't it? It's oh yeah, oh, goodness me! Crazy. It's <laughs> December now, and uh, it's been a long, long, long time. So, just just before we have a look at what you've been up to, kind of recently, what would you say to yourself if you could go back maybe five or six years in time to when you were kind of starting out your journey as a an artist? Um, what advice would you give to your younger self about you know how to how to stay true and how to you know keep your true north um, and everything in perspective? Yeah, I think I tend to worry sometimes, especially when I have new music coming out. I tend to be a bit anxious about how people would respond. And each time I've been proven wrong. So I'd say to myself five or six years ago, don't worry about how people would respond to the music. And also don't try to please everyone because you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. And that's just the reality. Absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of people veer to the middle lane. It feels kind of safe. But actually, I think you've you've, you've got to do your thing, even if people Mm -hmm. don't get it. Even if people don't like it, if you if you find people that don't like something, often you'll find people that that like it as well. Do, yeah, so, exactly. So, um, so yeah. So anyway, you you've been working with us through Rocket Fuel uh, recently. So for people who don't understand what Rocket Fuel is, could you you know I, I could obviously give my kind of spiel in terms of what it is, like being the founder. But what is it to you? Why did you why did you get involved with Rocket Fuel recently? I mean, Rocket Fuel for me is an answer to prayer. It's an eye opener. I could go on and on, but then you might just, your head might start swelling on the camera. So I'm just going to stop. But um... (laughs) I can step step out of the way. (laughs) But no, I mean, for me, I, I mean, this has been a really tough year. I released a single back in August and I didn't have the money to put a music video together. So I did a lyric video and I was working on a Christmas single, which is um, out now for pre-order. And at the time I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do the same because I don't have the money for it. It's just going to be a lyric video. And that was literally what it was going to be. And then I found Rocket Fuel and thank you so much for letting me know about it. um, Because I realized that I could actually kill many birds with one stone. I could raise money to do the lyric video. I could build a community of people who were keyed into the vision of making Christmas special because that was really what it was about as well. And I could equally create a brand because now I've created a brand of um, t-shirts and, and, and scented candles with a specific brand. And those are things that I would never really thought about because obviously money is a major factor to getting anything done. Yep. And having that, you know, that sort of framework or machinery, if you like, to raise money and build. I think for me, the community is very key because some people didn't even want to buy anything. They just wanted to give into the vision. And I think sometimes you don't know. I didn't know that there would be such a thing. Um, Because on my website, for example, I have a tab that says support my music. Not one person has ever clicked on that tab. That is is an amazing (laughs) statistic. I'm so glad you shared that. And I I, I can kind of understand why, uh, not that you're not worthy and deserving of support, but the way we we've structured rocket fuel is the first thing that people see is your video. They see your mission. You yeah. articulate your mission through sharing a, a video. You invite people along for the journey and then you've got the products and the things, you know, the, so there's something there for people who want to support and buy something. They get something great in return or they can subscribe monthly, but many people just, you know, they see your heart and they watch the video and they just think, well, I, I don't need anything in return. I, I just want to give, or they might like the look yeah. of the and think I'll buy this or I'll buy one for a gift or, you know, so we, we've set it out. So it kind of takes, takes the kind of audience, you know, who you're serving on a, on a journey, really. They understand who you are, what you're about. I think for a lot mm. of people, websites are just, they get a bit lost with so many options and so many things to do or click on. And we try yeah. and have a nice straightforward journey and it, it's, it's been great. You've, you've hit your goal this this very Yay! so congratulations <laughs> and stuff so tell us Thank what you. what kind of stuff have you got for sale on your rocket fuel store to kind of entice some of the people watching to 
go and go and buy something and get behind your your mission what have you got an offer for people the best seller so far has been the uh, christmas scented uh, candles and oh, wow. i just yeah i just recently got a message that they're being um, also considered by parents for teachers gifts this christmas because oh, i tend to struggle for what to get for teachers i don't think you can go wrong with candles to be honest especially since they smell absolutely beautiful um and also i've got um spirit cum jumpers t-shirts and hoodies but i've made it in french so i've used esprit vion which um oh, when i tasteful. yeah it is quite tasteful isn't it? it's quite bougie um because when i did the song spirit come back in august i had some french and portuguese subtitled um, lyric videos released and when i saw the word esprit vion come up on the lyric video i thought oh that's really nice it just looks like yeah. some brand or something so <laughs> that's great that's, i think sometimes yeah. the kind of lexicon around worship can can end up becoming a little bit archaic or we we're just so familiar with the language sometimes yeah, just yeah. one word like a translation or you know something from another language or culture yeah. it can really just it can feel familiar but also distinct and i think that's that's really nice so hats yeah. off to you to for you know really cool branding idea there so what does christmas smell like i mean Christmas Apparently it smells like, do you know what? One of the things I actually did as part of my Rocket Fuel campaign was I did a lot of research and I literally just posted things on my Facebook to find out before I go out and start making any products, are people actually keen? So I did ask the question, what does Christmas smell like to you in a candle? And apparently it's apple and cinnamon because a lot of people responded apple and cinnamon and that's what we've made the candles with. Okay. And people absolutely love them. I have some in the house and they're just heavenly, absolutely heavenly. So apparently it's apple and cinnamon <laughs> it's a fun thing me me and my family we love to go out to like when we used to go out of the house um <laughs> yankee candle shop's great we we go and like i've got a six-year-old daughter and a, and a younger one just just kind of smelling the candles i was thinking maybe christmas cookie you know kind of cinnamon and yeah, kind of there you go. sweetness but but apple and cinnamon sounds pretty good um but tell us about your your christmas carols event so we're, we're recording this now in December and obviously there'll be Christmas again next year. So if people are watching this anytime, Christmas is always just around the corner. But tell, tell us about your Christmas carols event. So I kind of thought ahead some months ago, especially when we were in the heat of lockdown. And I figured Christmas 2020 could be very tricky for people, for families, for churches in terms of just getting together and experiencing that communal you know, moments of singing carols together and having Christmas carols. So I decided to have a live streamed um, Christmas carol on the 12th of December um, from 7.30 p.m. It's a virtual event and it's exclusive. But after the event, I'm going to try and make it um, accessible for small groups and for churches, because I know that in this season, a lot of churches and small groups might, might want to have something together you know, and they might want to host something together and they might not have many options. So this would be an alternative or an option. And the whole layout is obviously with the restriction of lockdown, I can't have a whole band. So it's an acoustic set, me and a grand piano, beautiful Christmas lights, you know, Christmas tree. Um, I'm going to be singing traditional songs and the traditional and contemporary and also my first ever Christmas single would also be performed. And the songs are actually going to be sent out in advance so that you can actually have a copy to hand if you decide to print it and you can sing along. Because for me, the beauty of carols is the singing along element of it. Yeah. That, you know, everyone's voice is coming together and singing the hymns. It's just absolutely heavenly. It's beautiful. Um, and then I'm going to have a mystery kids choir aged four to eight there. And another thing for me is Christmas is about the kids. And the kids have been dealt the short end of the stick this entire season. And they haven't had birthday parties. They haven't had any chances to go out at all. You know, so having them just sing, you know, and um, celebrate Christmas as well, which is really what it is about, you know, about the kids is quite key. And I'm going to have Matt Kane, who was in Motown, the musical, um, sing a couple of songs as well with me on the day. So it's going to be great fun. And Bible yeah. reading as well. It's literally just going to be like a carol service with the Bible reading, the kids, the singing. The only, the only thing we can't do is put mince pies through the screen. You might want to get those to you hand. Bake, you, you can <laughs> bake your own or you can buy a yeah. thing or what, whatever. There's plenty of options there. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen a snippet of it and it looks it looks great. It looks really, really well put together. Thank you. You, you, know, you sing fantastically well. Again, not trying to make your head swell too much, but <laughs> you know, you, you're such a you gifted say. performer and... and no, from what I've seen of it, it looks it looks amazing. So we'll we'll post a link in there for any churches or small groups who are interested in seeing if they might be able to host it this year or 
any any year i'm sure it's going to be something that's that's available evergreen hopefully yeah stuff so i'm going to give you my really interesting bit of trivia around christmas carols now i live i live in the town of brockworth on on the edge of gloucester uh which is famous for cheese rolling i don't know if you've ever seen the cheese roll you should check it out it happens every may bank holiday about sometimes ten thousand people descend on brockworth and and uh, the hill and someone rolls a cheese down on, a, on a, you've got to see this it's crazy it's all over youtube and it's been going on for for years but anyway just up the road from there uh, is a village called Cranham, and if you know your Christmas Carol history, mm-hmm. you'll know that the tune for um, "In the Bleak Midwinter" is actually set mm-hmm. to Gustav Holst's composition called Cranham. And if you've ever been to Cranham, it's actually about two degrees colder than just down the hill where I live in Brockworth. It is very bleak, so that is actually the setting for the tune for "In the Bleak Midwinter." <laughs> really i go i go there literally every week i'm i'm in cranham just to be a bit bleak <laughs> just, particularly at christmas you really you really feel that bleakness that coldness and the tune just kind of you can, it's like you can hear it kind of echoing around oh, wow. the hills and, and is it picturesque but as well it's yeah it's a lo- it's a lovely little village just on the edge of the cotswolds so mm. so it's really nice so sarah just one one last thing um have you got any encouragements for artists writers people sharing their own songs we're, we're all about the new song with homegrown worship i know you've given mm-hmm. your advice to your younger self about not worrying but what encouragements could you give other writers artists and churches to to share their songs and, and make more of an impact through their music mission and ministry i think it's as you say sharing songs is very important but i think the creative process as well is equally as important if not more because when we talk about creating music for churches and for use in you know worship in churches there are so many elements to it and i think for me one of the most important things is the doctrinal soundness of the songs that we put out um i recently actually partnered with some friends of mine on my new album coming out to sort of make sure that as i'm writing the songs we're looking through the doctrinal soundness of the songs as well as they're going to be used in churches. And if there's one piece of encouragement I'd like to give, you know, people watching, especially if you're writing for church and for worship is to surround yourself, not necessarily with a crowd, but probably one or two people who, you know, are really sound doctrinally. They know, you know, maybe they even studied theology if you haven't, obviously, and um, they can actually sort of just help you through with feedback and constructive reviews of how balanced the music is because I've learned over the years that sometimes, you know, heretical ideas creep into church through music. And equally, a lot of people learn their theology through music. A lot of the things that I know, you know, and I've had ringing in my head since I was a kid are some, from some of the songs that I've been yeah. singing or learning in church. So as creators of music that would inform people's faith, I think it's very critical that it's not something that we talk about all the time. But for me, it's very important that our songs are doctrinally sound. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I was thinking about this yesterday that, you know, how many sermons have I heard? A thousand or more sermons. How many sermons do I remember? Not very many, not very many. How many many go really deep? But then the songs that we learn, they do stay with us for for years and years, for our our entire lives often. Mm. So it's so important that we are teaching and and giving people, I guess, kind of, you know, good biblical reflections of, of who God is and also discovering God you know, throughout our lives and, and through through the Bible, through our experiences, it's so important mm. that we we give people, um, you know, a way that they can understand who who he is and in an accurate sense as well. Absolutely, yeah, um, absolutely. So that's that's really sound advice. So I want to encourage people go and have a look at Sarah's Rocket Fuel page. Now, the thing with Rocket Fuel is she's she's run a mission and she's funded her her goal, but she still has all these great things on offer. You can subscribe monthly. You can support. Her ministry as well have a look at the christmas events thank you so much sarah for joining us today thank you. I know you're a busy lady with work and music and ministry and family so thank you for making time today uh, thank you for all that you're doing and excited that you're going to be able to get out again next year to yes. do some events and ministry with real people yeah i can't wait <laughs> real people there we go all right yeah bless. thank you all right you take bye care. everyone Keep bye andy you. cheers